In this video, I'll cover the basic information that you need to know to start making PowerPoint presentations. The first decision you have to make is whether you would like to start from a blank presentation or a template. In some organizations, you might be required to use a specific template to ensure consistency across different presentations. But if you're working independently, you can choose whatever you like. To start from a template, go to File, New, and select a template. Then click on Create. You can complete the details of your presentation from here. I'm going to start with a blank presentation for this video. Pay attention to the size of your presentation. There are two main choices. Nowadays, the default is usually widescreen or 16 by 9, but in some situations, you may prefer to use the standard size, which is 4 by 3. How do you know which size is right for you? The answer depends on how you intend for your presentation to be viewed. Usually widescreen will be appropriate because most computer monitors and cell phones display these proportions well. However, when I teach college classes in person, I often prefer to use the standard dimensions because the projectors in many of the classrooms I typically teach in display the image in these dimensions. In this case, if I were to use the widescreen option, the image would still be displayed, but it would appear relatively smaller, which can make it difficult for students to view. You can always change the size of your slides after creating a presentation, but the precise arrangement of text and pictures might become distorted. To change the slide size, go to Design, Customize, and Slide Size. You can see that I'm on widescreen right now, but I could also change to Standard. I'm going to return to widescreen. Adding more slides to a presentation is easy. You might add several at the outset of your project or create them individually as you go. On the Home tab, Slides Group, I'll click on the New Slide command. A new slide appears. Layout describes how text and images appear on your slide. If I click on the Home tab, Slides Group, then Layout, you can see the various options that are available. Some are more suitable for text and others for pictures. It's up to the person creating the presentation to decide what the most effective design would be for their purpose and audience. After you have a slide, adding text is straightforward. Click on the text box and then type. Once you have text, you can modify its formatting to change the font, font size, and color. The controls for these are very similar to Word and Excel. However, personally, I find that I use the increase and decrease font size commands more frequently in PowerPoint because I'm always trying to make text in my presentations as reasonably large as I can. Ask yourself whether people will view your presentation individually on their computers or cell phones, or will your presentation be projected on a screen in a boardroom or lecture hall? The answer to this question will help you decide an appropriate size for text and other visual elements of your presentation. All else being equal, I recommend that you do not use font sizes smaller than 24 points, but oftentimes even larger font sizes will be appropriate. Other aspects of the text that are easy to control are the line and paragraph spacing and text alignment. Most of the time text boxes will be pre-formatted to show the text as bullets. You can change the style of bullets by going to the paragraph group and selecting the arrow beside the bullets command.
When you want to create horizontal space within a text box in PowerPoint, it's usually convenient to use the increase list level and decrease list level commands. But if you do this, you may also have to modify the size of your text. Regardless of whether you decided to start from a blank presentation or a template, you can apply slide designs to quickly change the overall look of your presentation. However, if you do this after having created your presentation, carefully double check every slide to ensure that all of the words and images that you intended to appear are still visible because using the built-in themes often rearranges the content of your presentation. To choose a theme, go to the Design tab and select a theme. After choosing a theme, you can also explore the settings for various color schemes or variants. Adding pictures to slides is straightforward. You can add images from files on your computer, or you can search for images online directly through PowerPoint. I'll start by demonstrating how to add a picture from your computer. Within this placeholder, in the layout of the slide, I'll click on the picture with the computer monitor icon. An interface to browse my computer appears. I know I have a picture on my desktop called bunnies.jpg, so I'll click on that file and then insert. The picture appears. The ability to search online pictures is really convenient. I'm starting again from the layout of my slide and clicking on online pictures. I'll type rabbits. Creative Commons only is checked which gives me peace of mind that I'll be downloading a picture that I'm authorized to use. After selecting the picture, I'll click on Insert. The picture appears. In this version of PowerPoint, the citation information has also been added beneath the picture. Keep in mind that it's always a good idea to check if the content of your presentation complies with all relevant copyright laws. Moving objects within slides works the same way as in other Microsoft Office applications. You can usually click on an object and drag it while holding the mouse button to reposition it. To resize an object, click on one of the corners or sides to drag. But remember to be careful to avoid distorting its proportions in a way that would make your presentation appear sloppy to your audience. It is important to understand the different options for viewing PowerPoint presentations. There are four different perspectives that are useful for different reasons. The normal view displays the contents of the presentation as thumbnails on the left and the currently selected slide on the right. I use this view most often while I'm creating presentations. Notice that you can toggle a field for notes on and off at the bottom of the interface. Anything that you write here will be stored in the electronic file, but it will not be visible to the audience during a presentation. Some presenters write their speaking notes here, and others use this area for supplementary information like references and citations. For students who have access to their professor's PowerPoint files, this space can be useful for writing notes during class. The outline view is similar to normal, except that text from the slides will appear on the left instead of thumbnails. In this perspective, images will not appear on the left panel. Slide Sorter gives you an overview of all the slides in a presentation in a way that makes it easy to rearrange the contents of a presentation through dragging and dropping. I don't use this view very often, but it is useful when I need to create a new presentation from an old file. The last option is Notes page. Here, you see a medium-sized version of the slide's contents on the top, and the text field at the bottom contains the same information as the Notes field in both the normal and outline views. These different view options are intended for a presentation's creator to use depending on their preference. 
when it's time to show the presentation to an audience, a different perspective is usually more useful. In some circumstances, you may deliver a presentation directly from your laptop or desktop computer, and in others, you may be displaying the presentation for a larger audience on a projector. When you wish to begin the presentation, on the Slideshow tab, you can click From Beginning. This will launch a full screen view of your presentation. Clicking the left mouse button will move forward in your presentation. Alternatively, you can press the down or right arrows on the keyboard to move forward or the up or left arrows to move backwards. Notice that advancing does not always mean moving on to the next slide because if your presentation contains animations, each animation will be triggered by moving forward whether you use the mouse or the keyboard. Press Escape to leave this view. Animations can be complex, but here I will only cover the most basic example of an entrance effect. Personally, I find animations to be useful to control the pace of my presentations. If I include too much text all at once, my students will instinctively try to read all of the text on the slide before focusing on my verbal explanations. Animations can also be useful to conceal answers until an appropriate time or to surprise your audience, perhaps when delivering the punchline to a joke. When you wish to use an animation, prepare your slide as normal. Here I'll create just a basic example. I've already typed out some placeholders for my text. Next, select the group of items by highlighting them or clicking on their container. On the Animations tab, choose an entrance effect. I'll select Appear, but there's many options, and you can also find more by pressing the downward arrow. From the normal view, I'll see that numbers correspond to which mouse click will cause each of the items to appear. The first time I click, the first and second points will appear, and the second time I click, the third point will appear. I'm going to enter the slideshow perspective a different way this time, from the bottom of the screen. This slide starts with just the title, and when I click, remember there are two number ones, both point one and two appear, and the second time I click, the item that was labeled with the number two appears. I'll press escape. What if I don't want the items to appear in this order? Sometimes you want a piece of information to appear from the start of your slide. If it has been incorporated into an animation with a number, you can click on it and then in the timing group, change on click to with previous. The ones have changed to zeros. This means that point one and point two will appear at the beginning of the slide. Now, the first time I click, point three will appear. Adding emphasis and exit effects can also enhance your presentation, but it won't cover these features in this video. Whereas animations are actions within a slide, transitions are actions between slides. When applying transitions, remember that they relate to how the selected slide will appear when it is introduced during a presentation. Because most presentations have several slides, it can be confusing to distinguish whether a transition has to do with something that's going or coming. So again, remember that transitions pertain to how a slide appears. When I use transitions in a presentation, I almost always use the same transition throughout because I feel that too much action can be distracting for my audience. But whether transitions are effective for your presentations will depend on your specific topic and your audience. To incorporate transitions, go to the Transitions tab. Select one or more of your slides. To quickly select all the slides, after clicking on the thumbnail, I can press Ctrl and A to select all four slides in this presentation. In the ribbon, I see a number of options for transitions to the slide, and again, 
if I click in the bottom arrow with a line on top of it, I can see all of the options. For now, I'm going to use the push transition. A brief preview appears. To get a sense of how my presentation will actually appear, I prefer to view it from the slideshow perspective. Again, I'm accessing it from the bottom of the interface. The first slide will push up. The second slide will push up. Remember, this one has an animation for point three. One rabbit will appear, and then the other rabbits will appear. With just the information that I've covered so far in this video, you should be equipped to begin making PowerPoint presentations. Always remember that the purpose of a presentation is to communicate, so consider the needs of your audience as well as common sense factors such as whether your text size will be easy for them to read.